just all about is the change in where it goes and in how you actually handle it. And I had somebody on the show about a month ago. He said, we're all, in, we tend to be into two categories. We're either a camper where we're comfortable in life or we're a climber where we're embracing change and climbing out of that comfortable life. And that stuck and resonated with me because, okay, I understand the comfortable, but I didn't understand the camping. So when he described something that he was doing with his speaking, was he asked people, is it more difficult to fix your comfortable life or is it more difficult to take on change and go to that new world and be that climber? And I had to think about that and that was hard. And it's after a while I thought about it, it's, it's the same. You have to do the work to fix both. So why not put yourself in a better place to get that change going, to grow as a human being instead of staying in that same place and being stagnant and being that camper? Yeah, that, that really resonates with me. I think as you go down more of the personal development journey, you start to be more in tune with how you're feeling. And so I know me personally, about six months ago, I was feeling kind of complacent. And just, I guess the best way to describe it is blah. Like things are okay, but, and so I actually enrolled myself. I was like, what well, we really shake things up? And I've always been into like martial arts, but I haven't done it in a very long time. And I was like, Krav Maga kept on coming up in my head, which is like the Israeli combat huh? training. <clears throat> I was like, that seems pretty uncomfortable. And so I found, I did a Google search. I found a class like literally 10 minutes from my house. They have lunch classes, which are perfect for my schedule. And so I joined that. And that continues to be a, really pushing me out of my comfort zone because it's just, if you saw the class, you would see, like, it's just very difficult and it's intimidating, honestly. It's getting less, but it's still, it's challenging. And so I knew I needed that and it really woke me up. A second example, oh, go, you got a question? No, no, go ahead. Second example is that came back from vacation a few weeks ago. The day I came back, my main person at, on the digital side who manages the team, she resigned. Oh boy. Which is a great welcome home present. <laughs> but I'm very happy for her. I, I seriously am. And she was managing a team and doing other stuff. And in that, I was feeling like I was maybe a little bit too distant from the team. And I was like, you know what? Instead of replacing her, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to push myself out of my comfort zone and force myself to get closer to the team. And I use the word force because it, it sounds like I don't want to do it, but I knew it was an opportunity for me to shake things up and get closer to the team, closer to the clients and see what improvements I can make. And so it's just keeping your antenna up, looking for opportunities to push yourself out of your comfort zone. I think that's really important. And to improve and always look at the changes as in the, ch when change hits us, you don't want to look at it as a four letter word. You want to look at it as, okay, I'm going to, I'm trying and I'm learning. And that's just life in general. And when we discuss change, like from an entrepreneur standpoint or failure in that standpoint. A lot of people don't think that they think entrepreneurship is glorified because of unfortunately social media. But when you back up, there's that layer underneath inside of the nights that I stayed up and worried about all types of things and eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, making sure my bills got paid and employees got paid. Those are all the things that you worry about, but you don't get to see that from the other side. And so you have, unfortunately, I'm digressing. You have people that think entrepreneurship or leading a team, however you want to look at that, is just is glamorous. And there's a lot more work. And I like what you're doing is you're stepping back in and saying, I'm, I'm working to get myself in a better place, but also reconnecting myself to hone my skills. And you're willing to take on the change. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I wasn't excited about it the first few days. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, no, this actually makes a lot of sense. And I can turn this into a huge win. And now that I've had that mindset shift, like where I'm actually bought into it now, I'm like, wow, this, this is actually like to use an Ed Milet phrase. This is happening for me, not to me. Yeah. And I like, fully believe that now. So now I'm like into it. My schedule is all blown up, but I'm like into it. So like I had two check-ins with my team today, did them while I walked outside to get my steps in. I, there were two great conversations. I just left them feeling very full. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be, of course, there's going to be obstacles and stuff like that. but I think this is going to be a really good thing. And yeah, just don't be afraid of challenges. How do we take that into like your morning routines and personal development and kind of roll that all in? Because I think there's a good segue, but also some yes. good tips in there that you can share. Yeah, that was a great segue. <laughs> I like that. I appreciate that. I like to think of the morning routine. So I had a, this guy, Joe Evangelini, I'm butchering his name, but he's on my podcast. Evangelisti, Joe Evangelisti. And he was, he's all in this like storage locations and he's got some other things going on and he's got a big morning routine and he put it perfectly, which I'm going to just steal what he said. 
he looks at his morning routine as creating like that mental armor mm -hmm. that you need to face the challenges because it's still uncomfortable and annoying to have to deal with some of these things, but you build the mental armor to be able to handle it better and it not affect you as much. So when my, per when my main person gave her notice, I wasn't like destroyed. I was like, oh, now what do I have to do here? But I wasn't like, I wasn't crawling into a corner. I was bothered, but I was able to handle it. And so he, I think that's the best way to describe it is like the mental armor. And so for me, my morning routine, it cover, it goes through a few things. So I, I read a little bit. I do meditation. I a gratitude practice. I celebrate a win. This is all in a little, actually, you can see I'm not, I actually do it. That's from today. Cool. I write down who I'm going to, who I'm going to, what, what's, who I'm going to reach out to today. And then I have like a little journal spot where I'll write down my intentions for the day. And then I meditate for six minutes. I exercise for five or six minutes. It's not my only exercise. Of course, you have to crop and go and I walk, but I'll do like pull-ups and push-ups and things like that. And so I do that in like a 25, 30 minute compacted routine, which works for me. You have to find out what works best for you. But to me, that just, it's just creating like that mental armor that helps me face the day. I want to talk about masterminds, but I want to pause there for a second because I, I feel like I'm talking too much.